Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to WSU, for those of you traveling from afar. Before, before I get started, I, I have a question. Does anybody here need tran a translator? We have simultaneous translation going on. Our translators are in the back room there. So if anybody wants it, we're, we're just translating English to Spanish. So if there's any native Spanish speakers who want translations, raise your hand. So we're okay now. If you do, you can see Janet. Janet, you wanna raise your hand? Janet can uh, help you get that going. We do have some Bolivian farmers coming. They're driving right now from Seattle. They they are, they, I think five or six of them, they are farmers. They've never left Bolivia before. So this is our first trip and we will be translating for them throughout. We also have um, two or three presenters who will be speaking in Spanish and we'll be using some translation um, Spanish to English at that point. But, okay, so again, welcome to WSU and to the Quinoa Symposium. Thank you so much for coming. I know a lot of you traveled really far far and wide to get here. Just picking people up at the airport yesterday, there were a lot of tired faces and sleepy, sleepy eyes. So hopefully everyone got enough sleep last night um, because starting now there's, there's no rest for three days <laughs> at all. Um, and even though, so we have a great, really great lineup of speakers from all, all over. There's a total of 23 countries represented here today. And, and speakers are from many of those countries. And, and so really excited. I'm sure most of you have seen the speaker program and who's speaking and it's, it'll be a really nice group of folks over the next three days. But as good as they are, um, it's hard to stay awake for a whole full day of speakers. It's just sitting in a room is, is at least for me very difficult to do for more than a couple hours. So we each afternoon, Monday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon will be going out to the field. And I'll talk a little bit more about that right now. Um, but if any of you need anything or have any questions, this is just more of a, a welcome and informal, you know, I'll go over some logistics. And as I do, just keep in mind, if you do have any questions, now's a good time to talk about it. Go ahead and ask and, and we'll get some details figured out. Okay. So first of all, this is really associated and we chose this year because of the UN 2013 being the year of the quinoa. And so we're very lucky to have Tanya Santi Banyas here representing the UN and the FAO to talk about 2013, the year of the quinoa, all the worldwide events that are going on and what's gonna happen in the future with that. So um, that's why we chose to do it. Now, I first wanna, thank all the sponsors for this. We were very fortunate to have a, a really nice group of sponsors pay for different parts of this symposium. If we had to do it without these sponsors, it would have been a lot of money just to register and come here. And so thanks to them, we, we were able to. First, I'd like to thank Seed Matters, um, and in particular, Matthew Dillon. Seed Matters is, is a component of Cliff Bar Family Foundation. They're very supportive of public plant breeding and of our projects in particular. Hannah, do you wanna raise your hand? So Hannah over here is funded. She's a master's student, Hannah Walters, funded by Seed Matters. And her work is on organic quinoa breeding. So thanks to Seed Matters, they are funding Hannah and they're also sponsoring, they're one of our major sponsors for this conference. Earthbound Farm, Alec, are you in here? Alec, you wanna raise your hand? So. Alec McGarrick is representing Earthbound Farm. They've, they've been fantastic as well in getting us some help for this symposium. The USDA NIFA, so this is part of a grant, kind of the, one of the outreach components of the grant. And the grant is through USDA, National Institute of Food and Agriculture, and specifically the Organic Research and Extension Initiative. So probably 95% of the work we do with quinoa is certified organic. Um, but tomorrow afternoon, you'll see one of the farms that we're working with, um, Ian Clark and his family that's conventional. So we're trying to mix it up for you as well. So they've been a huge supporters of this. And then one of the most exciting for me is the, the fair quinoa vodka. They are 
Is somebody here already from, I haven't met you if you are. Not here. So they're, they are sponsoring the two cocktail hours tonight and tomorrow night. So that, that'll be fun to see how that, how that turns out. Washington State University, I mean, we're hosting it, but we're also sponsoring it through our Center for Sustaining Ag and Natural Resources program. Um, Chad Kruger, and they're very generous in helping us get going with that. So thanks to them too. And finally, Organic Farming Research Foundation. So they are not sponsoring this, but in 2010, fall of 2009, spring of 2010, when we began our quinoa research here at WSU, they provided us the funding to get going. So they gave us a grant of about $14,000. And because of that $14,000, four years ago, we were able to get um, more grants from WSU, the CSANR, and also a major grant from the USDA. So really, we owe a lot to OREI, OFRF and their initial investment in this project. So part of the USDA NIFA grant is our work with other universities, in particular Utah State. So is Jennifer or Earl here yet? There's Earl over there. Is Jennifer here? Jennifer Reeve is here as well. So we have some representatives from Utah State. Um, I think there's also a grad student coming. I don't know if they're here. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Nice to meet you. Um, and then Brigham Young University. So Jeff and Jeff Mon and Rick Jellen, you want to raise your hands right over there? So we've been very lucky that they've been so collaborative with us. They've been working on quinoa for, correct me if I'm wrong, but 15 years or so. They'll be talking during the conference and also out in the field. And I don't know when you started, but they started making crosses a long time ago, had lines growing in the greenhouse over many generations. And we're really kind enough to share those with us. So we, this year we've got 800 distinct lines from five different populations of quinoa and 120 or so lines from an amaranth population growing out in the field. So that you'll see that later today. And I haven't asked them yet, but Rick and Jeff, hopefully you're w willing and able to talk about those this afternoon. No, okay, well. <laughs> So we do have a great, really great group of speakers. This is just, I was picking up speakers from the air, air, uh, our international airport yesterday. And this is, this is really kind of exemplifies the international. I'm, I'm not gonna introduce all the speakers right now, but just this picture, this is Wilfredo Rojas from Bolivia, Luz Gomez from Peru, Sven Eric Jacobson from Denmark, and Moses Maliro from Malawi. And you know, every, every group we picked up was, was this diverse. And so we're really lucky to have this expertise, really the world's experts in quinoa here today, tomorrow and Wednesday. So it's a great opportunity just to figure out who you're interested in learning from, connecting with, collaborating with and go. They're all very nice, very approachable. And Pullman's a small town, Moscow's a small town. So when people come from far away, we, we really like to treat them well, um, treat them as honored guests. We're very honored to have them here. And so because of that, we, we try and make their stay here pleasant and enjoyable. And this is our walk on our way to Moscow from Pullman after we saw the, <laughs> the grizzly bears. We stopped here because this is, uh, this is actually where they're staying in the <laughs> barn right there. And there's room if anyone needs a little more accommodations. I think, I think there's plenty of room. Um, there, would, would everyone with a, excuse me, a staff ribbon stand up and just make yourself known? So take a look at these folks. We've got a great group of folks willing to help you. So if you need anything, Look for us, anybody with staff or, you know, we, we can do so. If you need something, if you need adapters, a ride, whatever, just let us know. We'll try and make your stay here comfortable and, and take care of you as much as we can. 
So again, yeah, that's just, we're hoping to welcome you in that, in that regard. So again, anything you need, just let us know. Ray, if, if anything is broken or, you know, you really have a serious problem, don't come to me. Where, Ray, raise your hand. Ray is our fixer. So if you need something broken, Ray can fix anything. He's really fast and um, very competent. So find that guy. He's the guy wearing the Johnny Cash outfit today. And really the most, th this project started in 2010 because farmers in Washington state asked us to start it. There was um, a lot of demand, a lot of questions. So we work a lot with wheat and barley, some legumes here, but a lot of the growers all across the state were asking, you know, do you know anything about quinoa? And other than eating it, no, the answer was no, we didn't know anything about quinoa. And so because of them, this project started. These are just some of the farmers we work with. There's a, a quite a good group of them. I don't have the farmers from Oregon here or Utah um, and a couple other states where we've sent quinoa as well. So, but these are farmers are all, you know, we have quinoa plots growing on their farm. We've only been doing this again for four years. So we make a lot of mistakes. And we were every, every day, every year, we're learning quite a bit. Um, let's see, yeah, this here, Amanda Hickson House, right here. We have plots on Amanda's farm. Amanda, I saw you, you wanna raise your hand? So one thing we learned from Amanda's farm this year was that deer really like quinoa. We were gonna go on a field trip to go visit Amanda's farm. It's really beautiful, you can kind of, I can't see it there, but um, just a beautiful farm. It was our example of a low input organic farm. So we have high input and low input organic farms. This was a low input organic farm. And um, unfortunately the deer, the deer ate everything. So we're not gonna walk, we're not gonna take that hour to drive out there. But if you have any questions, you can talk to Amanda. We, we are, are thinking of taking this research farther. We're gonna still, it's still salvageable. We'll still get some good results. We did learn that, um, the deer seem to like the red leaf quinoa better than the green leaf. So you can keep that in mind. Um, if you have, right, you're gonna have a trap crop out there. And then, so some of these farmers are from Western Washington too. And so we're not just breeding for, or working with quinoa for Eastern Washington or the Palouse. We're really focusing on all regions of Washington state. Our goal is to reach, reach as many different ecosystems, environments, farming systems as we can within Washington state. Um, but again, our goal beyond that is also working with Stephen Machado and Jennifer Reeve and Earl Creech. Where's Stephen? I saw you here. Yeah, so Stephen is our collaborator from Oregon state and gone down and looked at some plots in Western Oregon and everything's looking really beautiful down there. Um, so Stephen and and Utah, we're trying to get quinoa not just grown in Washington, but around the Northwest, around the West, and then hopefully eventually throughout the US and, and, and be, well, that's, that's what we'll focus on, but and beyond as well. So we're really lucky here to have Hassan Munir from Pakistan, um, Moses Maliro again from Malawi and other folks that are non-traditional growing regions for quinoa. So we're all kind of in the same boat as far as us essentially newbies at quinoa, trying to learn how to grow it in our environment, which varieties work the best and, and, and on and on. We've got a, a, lot, a lot of learning to do. So I just wanna go over some logistics, presentations and discussion. So we've designed this format to really facilitate discussion. So everybody will, all the presenters will have a PowerPoint or, or just give a talk and most of them will last, if it's a 45 minute talk, they'll last maybe 35 minutes. So there'll be a lot of time for questions. And so please, as, as the presenters are talking, just go around and, um, you know, first of all, during the questions time, we'll go ahead and hand this microphone out and you can come up or, or stay in your seat and ask a question. And we really wanna, after everyone, just facilitate discussion and, and get, uh, get, get talking, get collaborations and partnerships going through that. A little bit about the poster session. If you brought a poster today, that's fine, but we'll actually be setting them up tomorrow. It'll be in the foyer, which is 
just directly that direction from here. It'll also be at the same time as the, the cocktail hour, so you can't miss it. It'll, it'll come uh, from five to seven. Wireless, if anyone's interested, the guest name is Quinoa and it's WSU asterisk 2013. But no surfing the internet during the presentations. We'll block it off for that. So field visits, two field visits. It, it could be quite hot. It could lightning, thunder, who knows? It's been uh, great weather lately. Well, on Monday, after the last talk, we'll congregate up here, a little bit up on the hill. And that's where there'll be three different buses. So just go ahead, hop on a bus, and we'll go to the WSU Organic Farm. Brad, you want to raise your hand? Brad Jekyll is the WSU Organic Farm Manager. So you'll, he'll be talking more today, um, this afternoon, about, about that. And that we've been working really well with the organic farm there. It's got a great partnership going. And so after that, we'll spend from about three to five going on a tour of the farm. We'll have, we'll have a lot of time for questions and discussion on the farm as well. You'll see a lot of the student projects. And then at five o'clock, there'll be time just to mingle. So we'll have the, the quinoa vodka cocktail hour. There'll be beer and wine as well. And, you know, I would really recommend talking to Hannah, talking to Adam, um, talking to Rick and Jeff, and, you know, just walking around, looking at the different, all the different quinoa varieties that are out there. They're, they're quite beautiful. Um, and then we'll come back here after dinner. So dinner six to eight. We'll come back here if you're staying at Holiday Inn Express or Quality Inn, the buses will first stop here. If you need to get out, that's fine, get in your car. Um, but the buses that will then go to the, or at least one or two of the buses will go to the hotels. Tomorrow, we'll be going to the Clark Farm at 2.15. So we'll repeat the, the uh, getting on the buses again. This is not too far, about 15 minutes from here. Um, We'll come back about 4.30, and then we'll start the poster session slash cocktail hour 5 to 7. And again, that's just right over there. And if you are a poster presenter, come see me or Janet or, or one of the staff, and we can get your, we'll have the poster board set up by then. Dinner tomorrow night is on your own. So if you have questions, there should be, I think there was a map in the packet. Uh-oh. So if you're a speaker, keep an eye on Gayung. Gayung, you want to hold up your signs? So my sign says timeout. So that means I'm out of time. 